Welcome back to the channel. Over the last couple of days, I've talked about a couple of stories that are real indicators about the state of the American comic book industry and why it's not very good right now, namely Fat Jacks having to do a GoFundMe just to stay in business and possibly order new comic books. And obviously we have Aftershock Comics filing for bankruptcy, which I think a lot of people would have bet that it was going to be IDW or Valiant that filed for bankruptcy this year, but it ends up being Aftershock. The signs were there. There's a lot of people being screwed over right now. A lot of people not getting paid money for work that they completed by a lot of these small publishers, but by the bigger publishers as well. We're certainly hearing that in a lot of places that Marvel and DC are not paying. But if you go out there and you look at the media, they're trying to make everyone believe that this is just the banner year for comic books. We are in the best comic book market ever in the history of North America. But people like Rob Sokowitz, who writes articles for like ICV2.com, Forbes, places like that, he likes to talk about the geek industry, specifically comic books. I guess his claim to fame is that he's claimed for the last five or ten years that digital comics taking over the North American market was imminent. That has not happened. If he said that about the Japanese or Asian markets, specifically Japan and Korea, he would have been correct. But in America, that has not happened. But people are finding alternatives to DC and Marvel, and things are not in great shape. But he just released an article talking about the top stories for 2022. I do not believe Rob Sokowitz pen this article as a response or rebuttal to all this stuff coming out there. It's just that he's absolutely delusional, like everybody else in the comic book industry these days. The sky is falling, and they won't admit it. This is what he claims is the number one story for comic books in 2022. Let's start off with the good news. It's raining money. According to the annual ICV2.com Comicron Market Report, Sales were up nearly 60% to nearly $2.1 billion across all channels. Okay, technically, that all happened in 2021, but we didn't know about it for sure until 2022. So I'm putting it up on this year's list. Most growth resulted, as usual, from big increases in sales of young reader, graphic novels, and manga. But the high tide lifted all boats. Early word is that 2022 sustained that momentum although it's unlikely that once-in-a-lifetime double-digit increases of the magnitude we saw in 2022 are in the offing. That high tide lifted all boats, right? Why don't you go say that to Fat Jack Scoppers? Why don't you go say that to Aftershock? Why don't you go say that to the 150, the 200 creators that have not been paid by one publisher alone? That is just Aftershock. That's not taking into account Action Lab and all the other publishers, including DC and Marvel, that have screwed people over during the last calendar year. But Rob Sopowitz and ICV2.com, because their comic book industry shills, have to put a spit on this as if the sales from manga and Dab Pilkey's Dog Man have anything to do with the success of DC and Marvel. We can see what's happening with DC and Marvel. They are sold primarily, at least the periodics, you know, the graphic novels you can get a lot of places, but the periodics, their main product they use to distribute and promote their characters are sold in local comic shops. And we see a lot, and I do mean a lot of local comic book shops that are in dire financial straits right now this Christmas season. A lot of them won't make it through 2023. And I can't imagine anything more sad than being a small business owner. Someone that loved comic books your entire life, you decided to take your entire life savings, likely take on an enormous amount of debt, risk, so you could be a part of the comic book industry, open up a local comic shop and make sure that this industry survived, to make sure that this industry thrived and make sure there was another generation of fans of Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Spider-Man, X-Men, the Avengers and all that kind of stuff. And to be absolutely screwed over by Marvel and DC so badly at this point to where comic book shops are closing, people are in financial difficulties, small publishers are filing for bankruptcy and can't pay their creators nowadays. If you would have told anybody in the know that knew the comic book industry in North America 10 years ago that you could have this kind of record growth and DC and Marvel would have nothing to do with it, it would have been unbelievable. Nobody would have believed your prediction that you could actually grow comic books in North America without DC and Marvel leading the way, Marvel specifically, but they've been left by the wayside. There's an entire new generation of comic book readers. They don't read periodic comics. They don't read Marvel and DC. They don't read about the greatest heroes in the history of the world. They read manga. They read Dogman. They read Smile. All these other offerings that are out there. And it's absolutely sad that a majority of those products and those new customers don't go into comic shops to buy them. Certainly, there is increased awareness in sales of manga within comic book shops. We've been seeing that 
when the data was available. We're not allowed to see comic book sales anymore. And ICV2.com is a part of that. And so is comic book. They are part of the suppression of the information regarding comic book sales nowadays. I wonder if that's a coincidence. While they scream from the rooftops that everything is fine and it's raining money in the comic book industry, although every piece of information slaps them in the face and tells them what they're saying is incorrect. Go to your local comic book shop. Ask the owner how everything's doing. Ask what they can sell new comic books from DC and Marvel. And I'm going to tell you a lot of them, a whole hell of a lot of them are going to tell you we're having a real hard time right now. Moving new comic books is an issue. We're having to sell old comic books. We're having to sell Funko Pops. We're having to sell tabletop gaming. We're having to sell t-shirts. We're having to sell anything other than comic books just to keep the lights on. But we keep comic books in the back because we want to be a comic book shop. We started the business because we wanted to be a part of the industry and we wanted to help it thrive. But they've absolutely left their business partners by the wayside while everyone screams and shouts how amazing it is. Sokowitz continued, considering the state of the industry at the start of the 2010s, when the recession, the collapse of the borders, and numerous other uncertainties clouded the picture, the past decade has been a march of triumph for the comics business, both economically and culturally. The sales growth numbers reported in 2022 were splashed across the screens of a lot of investor presentations aimed at attracting new players into the space. Oh my, oh my, I bet people are just chambered at the bit to be a part of the industry where people are going out of business left and right. IDW is hanging by a thread. They're going to go out of business any moment now. Valiant Comics are hanging by a thread. They could go out of business any moment now. Comic book shops are in dire straits. The PPP pandemic loans have dried up, and now they're staring directly into the face of a recession while DC and Marvel have screwed over their business partners in every way imaginable over the past five to 10 years. What can we do with events? Let's oversaturate the market with events and make them not seem important or meaningful anymore. So nobody comes in for an event comic book anymore. Bam, really smart idea. Let's replace every major character that we have that's sold for the last 80 years or so. Let's replace them with more diverse, younger versions of the characters that nobody likes. And let's not give them any personalities whatsoever. Real genius stuff right there. Let's drive every major comic book creator that the fans actually like away from the industry. Let's lower their paychecks. Maybe, how about this? Let's give them the same page rate they received in 1989 in 2020. Let's see if we can keep some of this premier talent around. Oh, shockingly, they're going over there to work with Mark Miller over on Netflix. Wow, he actually pays good money. They're going over into the video game industry. They're going over into graphic design. They're going anywhere that they can other than comic books. They've seen the writing on the wall, and they've exited the industry as well. So now we're left with Stephanie Phillips riding a Harley Quinn event. Now we've got V.I. Allen Clunrad riding a Wonder Woman event. Marvel and DC literally drove away all of their customers. Sure, they've got just a little tiny bit of them left, and there are a lot of people that are speculating in comic books right now based on ratio variant covers and maybe the first appearance of a new character. But trust me, in about five years when they realize there's no interest in these new characters and they feel duped for ever doing it, they won't be coming back either. And everyone's going to be fucked over in the end. Anyone with two functioning brain cells can see that things are not right right now. But nobody will do anything to call these people to task. Nobody will actually put the real information out there and say, hey, listen. This could be going better. People are more interested in comic books in North America today than they've ever been. Why aren't DC and Marvel doing better? Why are IDW about to go out of business? Why are so many small publishers struggling in the greatest market in the history of comic books in North America? Why is this happening? A lot of people say Marvel wanted better fans. Here's the real problem. Marvel thought they'd do better than their fans. They thought you would just stick around. Oh, you like comic books? You'll stick around for all of our woke garbage. You'll stick around as we destroy everything you ever cared about because you're addicted to comic books. And while you're sticking around reading absolute crap, throwing your money away, at least they assumed you would, let's go find that better audience. Let's go out there and bastardize all of our characters. Let's go out there and just tell the same stories over and over again. Let's go out there and hire the most retarded writers we can get our hands on because they're cheap and they will do our bidding. They won't even go out of their way to tell a good story with the characters. The editorial staff can just tell them what stupid fucking story to write, and they will put it on paper. No effort whatsoever, but they will meet a deadline. And that's really the only thing people in comic books really even care about anymore. It almost feels like I'm on an island right now. Obviously, there are a couple people out there 
that truly care about comic books and are shining a light on the issues right now. But there are so many sycophants, so many hangers on, so many ass kissers out there claiming that things have never been better when they all know things have never been worse. Think about all the GoFundMes right now, not just for like old creators, new creators, supposedly in their prime, begging for money so they can buy a computer right now because they aren't getting paid. Think about all the creators out there just e-begging left and right. Please, please buy my comic books because I'm not going to be able to pay the electricity bill this month. You want to know what's going wrong? Recently, Gary from Neurotic posted this image on Twitter. It's an invitation to a Zoom meeting from the Writers Guild of America, which promotes previously established writers discussing how to go about reinterpreting legacy characters in a new queer light featuring the likes of James Tynan and other creators. Exhibit one million of everything wrong with comic books these days. Don't make new characters. Don't take the previously established LGBTQ characters and try to, I don't know, raise them up, give them a bigger profile or not that. There's an agenda aboard. We've got to take the characters that already exist that people like, and we need to change them because then they'll be the right characters. Everyone sees through what's going on with DC and Marvel. That's why so many people have abandoned ship. That's why this industry is absolutely fucked. It's great that manga creators in Japan are making a lot of money off Americans. I support that. This is a global economy right now, and they're providing better stories than we are in-house for the audience that would like to read them nowadays. But I wouldn't mind bringing a little bit of that business back home to America. It's great that we have an entire generation of new readers being brought up on Dogman, Smile, Raina Telgmeier, Dad Pilkey, and all that stuff. But guess what? They're not transitioning over to DC and Marvel. They're also transitioning over into manga because they've been raised on good quality comic book stories. You aren't going to get that from Marvel and DC. You're not going to get that from the majority of publishers in North America right now. That's why so many people are turning to crowdfunding. That's why people are going to manga. That's why people are looking for anything anywhere to satiate their desire for the stories that they want. Because the publishers that used to provide these products every single week better than anybody in the world have dropped the ball so spectacularly and they've driven so many people off. And at this point, most of them will never come back. I don't think DC and Marvel can fix the industry at this point. In fact, with the financial issues that Disney and Warner Brothers Discovery are having right now, sure, maybe Marvel and DC aren't losing a ton of money. Maybe they're even making a small bit of profit, as I understand that they are. But do you really think David Zaslav and Bob Iger are going to be like, do we want to spend this money and make almost no money back? Well, we're not losing money, but we're not really making any money back. Or do we want to invest it, I don't know, maybe in a streaming television show that could make a whole lot of money. And the financial difficulties of the parent companies may lead to all these things being licensed out, or even worse, maybe just shut it all together. Would that be the best thing for the American comic book industry? Just Marvel and DC saying, you know what? We can't really do this anymore. The parent companies are no longer going to finance these crappy creators with these crappy stories. They're not even creating anything these days that could ever be put onto streaming or movies and stuff like that. Even if you wanted to think about Marvel and DC publishing as a place to create new stories that will one day be adapted, None of the stuff being created these days will ever be adapted because it's almost all shit across the board at Marvel and DC. In fact, I talked about this in September of 2021, how Going Woke absolutely destroyed Marvel and how the MCU and DC comics were next. Not surprisingly, I was giving you spoilers, not predictions. Look at these problems. Look at the, all the problems I talk about in this video and you tell me one, just one that hasn't been made worse over the past year and three months. If you don't see the video here, there's also a link in the video description.